What's up everybody? Welcome back to Super Mega Baseball 3. We are 40 games into the season. The playoffs are getting close. And the Sharks with their big winning streak now have gotten themselves to be in pretty good shape going into this last stretch of games. We have won five games in a row. We'll put that to the test today as we try to solidify a playoff spot. I would like for this to be a larger episode. And we'll see how it goes as we try to get this team back to the postseason to compete for a title. Last episode, JR Battle made his Sharks debut and started to turn around his season. He has a 571 ERA right now. And we take on the Warhawks to start the episode. So I plan on recording multiple games today and simming. I just don't know what we're simming and what we're playing besides this first game. Well, Sim, Sharks, and the Warhawks, five win streak, and we're scoring late, but we go to extras and the Warhawks get the win, but five wins in a row is extremely good, although unfortunately the Warhawks moved to 21 and 19, so that's definitely bad for us, but now just a handful of games to go, eight left. Tyrus Sparks now with the Sharks at 20 and 20. Trying to close the season stronger than it started. 4 3. We've given up runs. Come back and win it in the 11th. If you noticed it there, walk off two run homer. Preston Sullivan, who's been so big for this team. I don't think that we're in this position even without him. And still, the standings have little to no separation. The Scorpions seem to be the only team that's out of contention right now, and they even have a negative 7 differential. That's not even, like, horrible, but I guess it is lower in this league. I don't know what's up with the Prowl at negative 42. They have some weird games, I guess. All right, so we're 1-1 one one to start today. Sharks and the Dragons now. This is a tough matchup. Big one for Zane Rose. Let's sim this one. They score first. We're having some trouble scoring first today. And we drop this one to fall a 1 and 2 on the episode. Alright, now you hope we can win this game. It's Al French and Brock Wall. Al French, 5 wins on the year. One of the best starters in the league this season. Maybe not a top 10 starter. There we go. Ty Gonzalez walk off home run. We'll take the wins any way we can get them. So we've basically just split so far here in the episode we've gotten into a third place tie looks like the firebirds you know are getting close to clinching the western conference title i guess you would say here and now jr battle takes on brady myers we'll sim another game here and again we can't score first but wow we get it going later only allowed the initial two and now it's a winning episode to this point. 23 and 21. Second place tie with the Chompers. I say now. We play a game. And potentially we sim a couple more and play the last game of the season today. I wanted this to be a big episode. So how about this? Tyrus Sparks against Ray Blaze. 7 and 1. 184 ERA. We need Tyrus Sparks at his best today to be competitive. We have Ty Gonzalez on fire right now. He's playing so well. Not many mojo streaks going on though. Just a few on our team. And here is Tyrus Sparks. 484 ERA, a far cry from where we wanted that to be this season. And it's likely his last year. But the starts recently have been better than the earlier starts, and one out there. Nine homers on the year for Ben Lobster Jr., who's going up the middle right at Casey for the second out. That one is jammed over first base, and the first hit for the Narwhals. And now this is actually a three game series. Most of these games have just been a different team every game, but this is actually three in a row against the Narwhals. Very critical stretch for us. 
And we got Tyrus Sparks against Ray Blaze. I mean, this is what it's all about here. Can't make the diving stop. It goes into center. And that's going to be first and third now with two down in the first inning. We got to get this inning over with. Not the best pitch there, but it's going to be popped up for Demario Waddle. Settling underneath it, inning over. All right, so what does Ray Blaze have for a challenge then? Well, he misses high with this pitch, but Velo, junk, enough accuracy. He'll throw a fastball, two-seamer, slider, and a curveball. Casey Daniels starts the day for us. 364 average. Five homers and 24 RBIs. A lot for batting in the leadoff spot in like a 48-game season. That was a perfect pitch to hit. Screwed that one up badly. Here's Sullivan now, and he has a 269 average with 12 homers. And that is a four-pitch walk. So his production is catching up to Neil Hope outside of the batting average, which is at 328. Uh-oh, got to go back, and we will not get there, or we will. All right. But now Ty Gonzalez is on fire. He's gotten the bat going here, leading the team now in average. He has 28 RBIs, 10 homers. Trying to get some first inning damage off Ray Blaze, who keeps missing the zone. That's another 3-0 count. We got to go green light. You can have that one. 3-1. Ooh, that's a good pitch to hit. Full count. Line drive. Into right field. Out number three. Nice catch over at third base by Sylvester Seymour. We may do a little more skipping things that aren't all that eventful in this episode just so I can get multiple games into a reasonable uh, time frame. But looks like two solid innings to start for Tyrus Sparks. That's a drive to deep center field off the bat of Waddle. It's off the wall. Are you kidding me? It's not gone. All right, well, Ray Blaze is surprising me so far. The accuracy, when you look at the ratings, you expect it to be fine. Not a strength, but not a hindrance, certainly. It has been an issue for him. That last hit by Waddle was on a 3-0 pitch. He's walked Sully on four pitches. 1-2 now to Cooker. And at least a productive out. And now Seymour needs RBI number 19. And again, starting with a pitch inside. And now one upstairs. 2-0 just like that. Wow, come on. That's two in a row. Two and two. Full count to Sylvester Seymour. Right field hit well. Back. Gone. Two-run homer. Seymour puts the Sharks on the board. Played that super defensively, just respecting Blaze's ability, not going to go power swing. Want to put the ball in play and at least get one. We'll get two. Nice lead here for the Sharks. He just keeps missing. I don't know what it is, but the pitch count's going to run up in a hurry at this rate. No reason to uh, swing at anything that you don't love. That has a chance to fall in. It will. So you go into games like this, I think. You got two aces. You know you might have to win a game. Two to one. Three to two. You got to make sure that you're having productive at-bats. Maybe steal a base or two. You don't expect to get the opposing starter out of the game early on. But I feel like we really have him on the ropes here. If we can break this inning open. Unfortunately, we can't do it here with Casey. But this is a big moment here in the game. He's already tense. Things can go from bad to worse in the game of baseball. 
relatively easily. But you can also just get a double playground ball and save the inning. Or the day. Oh, we already had two out, I guess. Okay. So, we're not taking him out of the game quite yet. But that was a really good inning. Gotta love what Sparks is doing so far. I think he's retired five in a row. We're getting some swings here on just okay pitches even. I mean, this is impressive for Sparks. All right, two strike count. We've gotten weak contact. How about no contact? I like that here. Let's get one of these strikeouts. It's a walk. Fooled him on that one with the two-seamer. Ooh, two whiffs. All right, then. Somehow not going after that changeup. In the air to right field and a tie ball game. That one's way back absolutely crushed Romano's 10th of the season just like that we're back to where we started now blaze is at a neutral mojo the game is tied and now blaze strikes out hope waddle hits it with 56 power and that's just not going to be enough as we take this into the fourth inning, I mean, this is just the most even game we could have right now. Neutral mojo, ace pitchers, two two-run homers, and a sharply hit fastball. Wow, he put down a bunt on a pitch that did not go where I wanted it to. Take it over a swing, honestly, that wasn't a good fastball. Stop! No, it's not. It's slowed down, but it's still getting into the outfield, and that is an RBI single. And now the Narwhals have the advantage. Duke Wilson, yet to homer this year. He's not going to now, but he's put up pretty good numbers outside of the zero homers. There we go. Right between the diving infielders, Sylvester Seymour has a hit here in the fourth inning as we try to get that run back. Ray Blaze, ERA, just over two. And this will be the second out of the inning. It's up to Logan Aguirre. That's the worst swing of all time. Oh, and two right back up the middle. And two aboard. All right, haven't had good at-bats today with Casey Daniels. He's tense now. Could really use a line drive into the outfield or a grounder to second. A base runner at second here for the Narwhals, top of the fifth. Fooled him there with the changeup. Sparks has not gotten the strikeouts today, but he will here. Fooled him. Curveball. All right, Mojo is back to neutral. We're not tense anymore with Sparks. And hopefully get this out. Yes, just barely. Blaze at 60 pitches. Here entering the inning. That's into left field. Sully's aboard. Base hit. Taking off. And they're still going to get a double play. Wow. I really thought he'd be safe at second. Two down. Oh no. Gonzalez just locked in now. Swinging at everything. Broken bat and another good inning for Ray Blaze. Probably going to try to get Sparks at least through six. We'll see about that. A change up low, golfed into the right field seats. It's way gone. Milk Gale, six of the year. 
Everything's been scored on a home run today. Actually, no, that's not true. One of their runs was not on a home run. And now it's starting to feel like Sparks Day might be over. This is bottom of the order here. We're trying to get through this. Again, Duke Wilson, no homers on the year, but he's hit for a good average. He's driven in runs. And that is going to be a base hit. That was inches away from being a double play. Base is empty. Bunt there is a good call. One down. This isn't working at all. Alright, got one strike at least. That's a good change job. And I can't get a call on that. Alright, I think Sparks Day is done. Didn't go exactly how I hoped, but the bullpen is fresh. They can take over. Can we get a strikeout here from Velez? Ooh, got the outside there. Now a fastball. Swung on and missed 100 miles per hour. Bases loaded now. Isaac Romano. Huge day for him. I'd say that's enough for one day. Great to Neil Hope. They get one more. We've got to get some runs now off Ray Blaze. We've been really quiet for a few innings. And that's going to help. Leading the way to Mario Waddle. Double into right center. Sylvester Seymour has his average up a little bit. It's to 217. It was under 200 for a while. Not trying to take third base here. Might have to go with the contact swing again, and we'll at least get him to third base, but now it takes a hit. We have all these sparks. 234, he's batting eighth now. Haven't seen much from him lately. Right down the middle, down the line! This is foul! So close! Oh no! Just missed it. Two and two. I don't think it's falling. Caught by Gale. There we go. Swing and a miss. How about a base hit in the left field on an 0-2 pitch? Another inning here. Not starting how we had hoped. Gotta try getting these strikeouts. Power pitches are just the way you gotta go sometimes. Strike three. I mean, I've never really thrown power pitches, I think, like super consistently. Like, they're high risk, high rewards, so how sustainable is it over the course of a full game? I don't honestly know, but we're having some good results here. There you go! When they're accurate, I mean, they can't touch these. Velez with a few big strikeouts in this outing. All with under 20 pitches. And now this one's going to deep right. Back at the fence. Sully makes the catch. Wilson almost had his first. Looks like Ray Blaze is trying to go at least seven innings today. One down. Mojo now locked in from tense to locked in in just a few innings That's a base hit go back to neutral And here goes the accuracy now as soon as he's back to neutral getting away from the catcher safe at second Sully 3-1 deep to center Kiss it goodbye! Tie game! Sully comes through as he has all season long. 449, 39th RBI of the season. Here we go. 
You know, with how great Velez has done with these strikeouts, I'd like him to be in line for a potential win. And Neil Hope's gonna help us out. Deep right center. It's gonna be close. Safe. And there goes Ray Blaze. Good outing. But maybe left in a little too long. Otto Hill out of the bullpen. 56 strikeouts for a relief pitcher? What? That's like all of the batters he's faced. Runner on second, Ty Gonzalez. Ty to center field, down! Sharks will take the lead! Three here in the seventh. We'll take this one into the eighth inning. George Moroff coming off the bench. Luis Velez locked in. I think you let him keep going. We have a fresh bullpen, but Velez now locked in, still has some stamina. He doesn't have to pitch the entire inning, but he still could. Well, a one pitch pop up. We go to the power pitch strategy and things are clicking. That's the best contact on a power pitch, but it's caught. So we know we're going to have a ninth inning lead now. Andres Valdez will get the ninth. Let's see if we can get him one more run. Locked in Seymour. He has not been locked in for a very long time. Green light. Seymour left field! Green means gone! 454 feet! That one kissed the moon. Was ready for that 3-0 pitch. They don't usually give me one that good. They'll throw a fastball inside. I'll lay off. That's a bad swing, but we've had some good ones. All right, KC2 down. All up to you here, and we're going to the ninth with a two-run lead. I'm fine with that. Excellent outing for Velez. He's earned the win. But now it's up to Andres Valdez to put it in the stat sheet. And we have ourselves two quick strikes. And a roller to Seymour. One down. Throwing gas here in the high 90s. We've seen him hit 103. Three pitch strikeout down to their last out. We'd like this to be a quick outing here. Valdez isn't completely fresh. Might not be active for the next game. Here you go. Two strikes. Ooh, good take. Wow. All right, here you go. On the ground and through. Base hit. Nice battle. That's a grounder. Sparks to first bowl game. Great win for the Sharks. Ace versus ace. We get the job done. Very tight, fun game. 6-4. We end up with five total home runs in this game. We get three of them. Two for Seymour. One for Sully. And a huge win here for Luis Velez. 24 and 21 that guarantees that we're going to finish the year with at worst a 500 record is that good enough for fourth place i don't know but we're in a good spot let's sim a game we have zane rose taking the mound in this one as the razors beat us handedly now i totally missed a lot of this series here against the narwhals it ended up being a sweep. Now just a couple games to go in the season. We look like we're in decent shape here. And that sweep over the Narwhals, I mean, is so big. They're just a half game back right now. I say we sim this game here and play the finale. Al French, one more win, please. 
We score first. Four to two. Well played. I think we're a playoff team with that. 25 and 22. Shouldn't be any issue. So we can go into this last game here maybe with uh, not much concern. Especially because we just swept the narwhals, but it's still so close. I don't know. I don't know how they handle tiebreakers. I think it'd be run differential. Say we lose, narwhals win. Does it come down to a uh, run differential tiebreaker? Because right now, we have them beat by two. So, I think it's still an important game. JR Battle, helping us get to the postseason perhaps? Well now, we have to go win this game against the Foxes. They're 28-19. Just our luck here to have to face a team that's uh, playing super well. We've had a couple teams break out now. The Razors and Foxes must be on streaks to be that far above 500 here all of a sudden. The East is totally taken care of. Four in, four out, we already know. But here in the West, I suppose it's mostly done, but the Narwhals could get in. I will say we have one concern going into this game. First off, Sylvester Seymour is hurt. Playing so well, locked in, two homer game, and now an injury. You hate seeing that. But you know who's ready for a huge opportunity today? How about Entertext? He has earned this opportunity with his hits this year, being one of our best pinch hitters. Now he's going to hit ninth today, but this is a great chance for him to show what he can do. But I like to take care of some of these mojos here. You don't want to have all these negative mojos. Although I think they get neutralized going into the playoffs, so it may not matter. Either way, game 48. Hoping there's more baseball to be played once we're done. JR Battle. That is a line drive, and Sully can't stop it. I didn't realize how risky that would be. A single has turned into a potential triple. On the ground. And there is a run. Foxes score quick. Throwing 97 here. I do think that on these higher mojos, like, you just gotta throw power pitches. It's hard to win pitching the contact all the time. You need strikeouts. Or soft tappers. Oh, no. We're not getting anybody. I'm playing terrible defense to start this one. I just want to end the inning and uh, kind of start fresh going to the offense. McCarthy base hit. Cooker comes up throwing as they'll try to score and get the second run. Play ball. So who are we facing today? It's Connor Roberts, 3.7, a 1.1 whip, 56 strikeouts, throwing some heat. High 90s. Driven to center. Daniels back. Caught by Radical. Falling behind here quickly and blown away. Strike three. Hoping for a much better second inning. It's starting the right way. We have an 0-2 here. And a big strikeout on the outside. We're already back to the top of the order, though. It all began with the Lauren Marshall triple. 0-2! Oh, swing and a miss at the changeup. Better inning there for JR Battle. Here's Ty Gonzalez. Ooh. That's going a long way. Deep to center and touching down on the warning track. Lead off double. Ooh, this is going to be close. No, he's going to be caught here in a pickle. I thought we could get there. Got too greedy on the wild pitch. Ooh. 
Right center field and down for a hit. Could have gotten a run if I wasn't trying to be greedy. Ollie Sparks. On the ground! Stopped by Hungry Gamer! Out at second, they only get one! So at least the one in this inning, and now it's a Aguirre. Inside out to third base. Inning over. Very good numbers on the season for Callan Guerra. And he goes down looking. I'm liking these power pitches. That one gets smoked into center though. They're not like a guarantee better pitch if you are accurate. Like you can still give up hard contact. You just have a much better chance to get some swings and misses. It doesn't happen here, that's for sure. Gone. That was anticipated. Have I been throwing too many fastballs? Well, here is Enter Text hitting 727. I don't know how many at bats he's had. Enough to have six RBIs. But I know one of those was a pinch hit grand slam. He's retired here. Hopefully Text can have his moment today. Casey will get a base hit. We gotta fix his mojo. Sullivan caught at second base. Got a good pitch there. How about a base hit now for Hope? Trying to get a two out rally. Ah oh, man, don't have to go after that one. Gonzalez retired, still 4-1. I want that pizza. They're getting some hits here off JR Battle, that's for sure. I don't know that this is going to be a very deep outing. Already tense. I mean, if this inning doesn't go well, there's no reason to not go to the bullpen. Let's just see where they're at today. So, Angelina Anderson, tense, didn't pitch the previous game. Velez, fresh. Parker, not fresh. Valdez, not fresh. So, you know, you hope for like two really good innings potentially from Velez. And then you probably pitch Anderson. Try to fix that mojo and hope for two to three more. And that could get you through the game. Would love to see if JR Battle can at least get us through five innings. This one is going to be a much better inning it looks like, but could not get two. They're hitting these weak ground balls, and it's weird because most of the contact in this game is really good contact. So, like, timing up double plays is pretty simple, but reading if you can get the double play... On a slow one in this game, I find to be much more challenging. I threw it to the wrong base. I'm like, you're actually taking third? At least there'll be no score. Well, we'll start the inning here with a base hit. We gotta get something. Sonny Cooker into right field with Waddle going with the pitch. First to third. Line drive into center field. Another run for the Sharks. I apologize, Ollie Sparks, for drafting Frederick Hughes over you, but at least we've had this series and the one season with the Bucks. Putting down a bunt here, it didn't work. I'll try it again. And I missed. No more bunt. Just a double play, unfortunately. Oh, we beat it out. No way. Well, we talked about enter text. Let's go. First and third. Line drive. Caught. And a double play. Unfortunate. Third trip through the order. JR Battle 
Gives up a base hit right away in the fifth. I think we go to the bullpen then. We will go with Luis Velez. Really good strikeouts in that previous game. And here facing the best hitters on this team. 2-6-1 ERA. Like, he's put together a complete season, too. On the ground and through. Are you kidding me with that weak contact? First and not third. What a throw. Sully's got a cannon. Wow, he can hit. He can throw. Wasn't counting on that. Runner goes. Perfect throw. Save. That's deep to right field. Sully at the track. Focused on the hitter. Ava McCarthy popped up. They're not having too many one, two, threes, though. You got to think about, like, how many runs do you think are enough? Today feels like seven. Casey Daniels, base hit. Mojo isn't great for Connor Roberts. Ooh, Sully tried to tie the game. You know what? He might just do it. Deep right field. Tied at four. Preston Sullivan. Perhaps the MVP of the season. 42 RBIs in 48 games. That's incredible. All tied up, and I could have clobbered that one, too. Connor Roberts, tense. Surprised the home run didn't drop it even lower, but it's probably pretty close. Base hit right field. Gonzalez now in the center. This offense is playing well. Wow, that was a great pitch to sit back just a little bit more. Two and one to Demario Waddle. And now the count even. First four have reached in the inning. And now a full count. Again, just ahead of it. Ooh, that was ball four. Good pitch on the inside. I go after that one quite a bit. Roberts trying to save the inning, and that's how you do it right there. Sixth inning underway. Runner on first. Hungry Gamer at the plate. Hammered to center field, and Waddle, no! That was not that far away. They're going to try to score for the lead! Hopefully finish this inning here with Velez, but the Foxes have retaken the lead. This team has not been as easy to strike out, that's for sure. There you go, Sparks, nice play. And we're back to Madeline Payne. And that's hit to Casey, so the Foxes take the lead, 5-4. Ollie Sparks connecting on the first pitch of the inning. And he's going to be in at second with a leadoff double. Enter text. Runner at third, one down in the sixth. No! Didn't have to move the reticle. Looking for just a nice single here. And we get it. Despite swinging at a pitch, I should have absolutely let go. I really want one more inning here with Velez. Or maybe a batter or two. I gotta be careful in this inning. It's starting to get a little tougher to control the power pitch. Let's lay off of it. Strike three. Simple slider inside. All right. Getting ahead in the count here. We'll throw one more power pitch. Ooh, that one might have been inside. I think we'll go to Anderson now. 
Angelina Anderson to finish the seventh inning. 5-8-3 ERA. Has not been the best stretch of her season. Started super strong. Trying to finish strong here. Radical two strikes. Let's throw a couple outside here. Too much of the plate. Not diving. It's a really good lineup. This team never seems to give you a break. They're good on the base paths. Like, this is a championship contending team here for sure. All right. Two strikes again. Just missed. Two seamer. In the right at Sully. Still tied. Gonzalez again. All I do with him is hit doubles, it seems. Into that area, too. Wow, McCarthy could not get the tag, and they still get the inning over. Nice play. How many times today have they gotten the leadoff batter aboard? Feels like there's always base runners to worry about. And this is a team that steals bases. And they're trying again. It hurts not having an elite catcher against this team. That's how you just get one hit and get in position to go and untie the game. You need some strikeouts here to simplify things. Come on, I need that call. I really need that one. Getting nothing. All right, we'll take a pop-up in on the hands. One down. There you go. Nice strikeout. Two away in the inning. Now Lauren Marshall, just that leadoff triple. One for four on the day. Got two strikes. Really got to get out of the zone here, I think. Which of the five pitches do we want? I'm thinking change up. On the ground. Inning over. Pitching around the leadoff single and stolen base. Great job by Angelina Anderson. Ollie Sparks. He will reach. We're getting the first leadoff batter aboard quite often too, it seems. Ah, wasn't sure if that was going to be caught or not, but it's just a quick double play now. And here's enter text. I mean, a season long pinch hitter with two out in the eighth and they gave me the meatball right away. I wasn't ready. And now these two are missing wildly. Ooh, outside. Two and two. Enter text. Keeps it going. Text. Getting closer. No. Top of the zone. Are you kidding me? Time to bring in Tanner Parker. It's the ninth inning. Two, three, four hitters here for the Foxes. I think the key here is I don't want the leadoff batter aboard. There it is! 97 for Tanner Parker. We have two strikes now on Callan Guerra. And that's another strikeout! The inning up to Enzo Huffman. Or we're going to have a walk-off opportunity. Seven homers on the year, 32 RBIs. Stopped it. Getting to it eventually. Out at first. Let's end the game. This one doesn't have to go to extras. You got Casey leading off. 
We're ready to end this game as soon as possible. Harry Fitzpatrick Jr. though is locked in. Although tiring out quickly. Good pitch on the outside, two and two. Full count to Casey Daniels. Base hit center field. And who do we have up here? Preston Sullivan will face Colorado Newton. 305 ERA. Lefty throwing a fastball slider curveball with a lot of movement. Sully to center. I don't think it's enough. That. Off the wall. No way. I thought it was going to be caught. We just have to bring Casey home now. What happened there in center field? Come on, Neil Hope. Let's end the game right here. No, go back, go back, go back. No way, double play. I had Casey going back. I don't think it even mattered though if I hit like the everybody go back button because he was so far off the base. I can't believe that. Ty Gonzalez, is this going to be an intentional walk? It is. So, Gonzalez won't get a chance. I think that's a good call on their part. And now Demario Waddle. He's tense. They're going after him. Waddle on the ground. Extra innings. I can't believe it. Even after first and third, nobody out. One bad line out. And the game continues. Well, a pop-up to start the 10th inning. Tanner Parker looking for three more outs. Hope makes the catch at first base. Now let's actually end the game, please. Lachlan Cochran entering the game. Now more velocity than movement. And it's enter text who's tense. I mean, this is not a normal day for him. He's used to one at bat, one hit. It's been like four, and he hasn't done a thing. Enter Tex behind 0-2. Lined it right to short. 11th inning coming up. We got to go to Valdez now. Our last relief pitcher. I want this game to be over soon, but... I'm sure their bullpen is very similar to ours right now. Not much more left for stamina. 101 had no idea where it's going, but the batter couldn't hit it. Top of the order again. Marshall connects. Deep right center. Sully there. And that one is stopped. What a play. Sparks. No. Foxes have two aboard here for Huffman, who's driven in 32. Power pitches. They're going to either win or lose us the game. Grounded. And I would like to now end the game, please. And that is not going to happen. Strike three. I think here we have to bring in one of the starters. They, they have some stamina. We got to go with Tyrus Sparks. I'm pretty sure everybody's fresh for the playoffs, so it's not really a big deal. But Tyrus Sparks pitching relief. Missed it, but didn't matter. Really quick inning here for Tyrus Sparks. One, two, three. Bottom of the 12th now. Ty Gonzalez. That is going to center. Come on. Send him home happy. It's caught. Come on. For what it's worth, too. As soon as I'm done with this commentary, I'm going to bed. So this is also keeping me awake. 
That's driven by Waddle. It won't leave, but it will touch down. And he's rounding second and safe at third. Bring him home. Send the fans home happy. And let's call it a night. Sonny Cooker. One strike from Lachlan Cochran. Almost swung at that. Would have been a pop-up. Two and one. Cooker lines out. Unbelievable. Four for five on the day. 80% of his at-bats are hits, but can we get one here to end the game? Ollie Sparks. Good pitch. Two and two. Full count, Ollie Sparks. He walks. Who's next? Hudson Lumen. Haven't seen him today. His first at bat of the night. Bottom of the 12th. And I think they're loading the bases. And the moment will be happening. He struggled all night long. But he's been there for us when we need him. Enter text in the batter's box. They wanted to face him specifically. In the dirt. 1-0. Found the zone here. Come on, text. Line drive. I can't believe it. Come on. Zane Holt leads off the 13th inning. Sparks is really doing well in this relief appearance. A surprise final appearance of the season. And he's going to be in line for a win if we can find out a way to score. We've had runners get to third base with less than two out. Casey won't get it. But he gets singles better than anybody on the team. I know who gets home runs though. Preston Sullivan. Send us to bed. Sully, center field, down. Radical cuts it off, but it's first and third. Nobody out again. I think here, what I want to do is steal second base. Boof Cobb, I need you to steal second base there you go line out double plays now less of a concern left field caught won't test just put it in the outfield Ty Gonzalez to win the game and they're going to walk him again this game wants to go five hours ground ball double play in effect now Mario Waddle, not easy to double up. Seventh at bat. He'll face Bruce Jacks. Missing with the first two. In the zone, though. Two and one. Strike two to Mario Waddle. Full count. Nowhere to put him. And a stop for McCarthy! They got the double play! What's happening? That's the one thing that couldn't happen. The sharp grounder double play. First and third, nobody out twice. Come on. Well, we're going to pick up a double play. Into center field, and Waddle will send us to the bottom of the 14th. Too easy. I'm trying to get that home run. Nothing else is working. 
Lumen. That's going to be a 1 2 3. That one, though, is going to reach the wall, and the Foxes are going to have a scoring threat now for the first time in a while. Bolt Mercado hammers one to deep right center, and that is going to break the tie. Tyrus Sparks pitching so well, but eventually the Foxes offense comes through. We're going to Zane Rose now. But this is still not looking good. Foxes are hitting well. Sparks can't make the play. They're scoring again. Missed it twice? Alright, it's a big inning then. Wow, just breaking the game open here at the end. I can't believe it. You know what this really hurts though? The run differential tiebreaker. We're in extra innings now and we might lose the game by seven runs. So, even if we can't win, it doesn't look likely. It's kind of big here to get a couple runs. Just to help the run differential. Because, I mean, we're going minus seven here. Unless the narwhals are blown out, they're going to have a better differential. And if they win, that could mean we're out. Casey Daniels is five for seven, five singles. Stopped. Safe. Six singles in one game. It's got to be a record. Deep to center, Gonzalez, gone! Bottom of the 15th, and I can't even celebrate a three-run homer how I'd want to, but as far as run differential goes, that's a big help. Not going to happen. Sharks end up losing the long game here, 12-8. So we lose by four, better than losing by seven. So that'll knock down the run differential. And I suppose now it depends what happened with the Narwhals game. They play the Scorpions, so they have one more game. Here are the standings here. We're right on the cusp of the postseason. Chompers and Warhawks have to play. Narwhals have to play. If the Narwhals lose, we're in. Here we go. When is their game coming up? Prowl win. Warhawks 2-1. to one, And then the Phantoms end up winning it. Firebirds, Chompers. First place versus second place. Whoa, 14-1. Here's the game. Narwhals winning. They beat the Scorpions. It didn't knock us out. We're ahead of the Warhawks. I think we're gonna be in. The Narwhals are also in. If we're in the postseason, let's spend these points here. We have some really good opportunities. I feel like this upgrade for Angelina Anderson is really good. You'd like to come away buying two here. Could we buy the upgrade for Anderson and Velez. I think either way, I want the one for Anderson more. She'll have more stamina. We get plus four. No traits acquired. And we still have enough for Velez. Velo. Up by four. And didn't get the trade. We got in. And we will try to get some vengeance here against the Chompers. A team that obviously ended our season back in the beginning of this series and won the title that year. 
So we have playoff action coming up next. I'm planning on doing multi-game episodes. We'll see how big they end up being, but we will have playoff baseball in this series, and I hope you're all looking forward to it. Please leave your thoughts down below in the comments section, but I should go over league leaders, actually, before we're done. So here were the top players. Looks like Jimmy Mills was the MVP ahead of Anton Greenberry, Asher Wright, and William Lindsley. Casey Daniels in fifth. Casey Daniels gets the batting title, 372. Asher Wright, most homers with 17. Archibald Tedson, 47 RBIs. Here's on base and slugging. Casey Daniels, Asher Wright. Daniels had the most hits. Runs scored, Asher Wright. Stolen bases, Perry Cummings had 24. Pitching, Anna Reed, best ERA. Her and William Lindsley, one and three. So the pitching here is gonna be tough. We're going to have to have this offense at their best. That will do it for this one, everybody. But the playoffs are coming up next. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and let me know, do you think this team has what it takes to compete deep into the postseason? Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.